Hello YouTubers. Does the smell coming from several different hot water faucets in your house smell like a cross between rotten eggs and a catalytic converter? Well, let me show you what is most likely the culprit and what I did to fix it at my house. So let's get after it. This video pertains to my electric 40 gallon hot water heater. Now I have this whole house carbon based water softening system which uses salt pellets and a kitchen styled trash can to backwash the water on a timer every three days. So why does my water still smell? Because water softening has nothing to do with the minerals that attack and attach themselves to the anode rod inside the hot water heater. Additionally, those smelly sediments can settle at the bottom of the heater and that begs the need to drain the water. I began this fix by ordering this anode rod to match the one in my heater. I did my homework and settled on one made of magnesium. Supposedly magnesium is healthier than the one I will be replacing, which is made of aluminum. The standard length is 48 inches, and I will post a link to the model I ordered inside this video description. If your heater is in a cramped space and you don't have 48 inches above your hot water heater, you can order a model like this which allows you to remove or feed in small sections at a time into the top of your heater. In addition to replacing the anode rod, I'm going to show you how to flush the tank for these three reasons. I began by cutting the power to my water heater. You may need to throw a breaker in your electrical box, but make sure the power is off before proceeding. In my case, I need to remove this jumper connector. Cut off the cold water supply. Mine is marked by this blue ring on top of the water heater, and I simply turn this ball valve to shut it off. Flushing the tank begins by attaching a hose sturdy enough to handle hot water to this drain faucet at the bottom. Run the other end of the hose to a floor drain, or run it outside where extremely hot water won't be an issue for humans or pets then open the valve. The water is not flowing. What's going on? The water in the tank is vacuum locked, just like in this tube. Removing my finger allows air in and breaks the vacuum. Turning on a hot water faucet does the same thing for the drain. While the water completely drains, locate the old anode rod. Mine was not labeled in black, but I highlighted the raised lettering for video purposes. This is the industry standard size for the anode rod fitting. If you plan to try and break loose this connection using an impact wrench, consider using impact sockets and a strong wrench. This can be a tough connection to break loose, but I'll show you what eventually worked for me. I hooked up my breaker bar for attempt number two. It would be nice to have someone to hold firmly to the tank, because at this point I don't have the leverage to break loose the connection, and the tank wants to move when I pull too hard. I purchased a piece of galvanized pipe to fit over my breaker bar handle, and cut a couple of feet off the end to use for leverage, in what some people call a cheater bar. I call it smart. Some sandpaper was used to remove the burrs on the pipe. And here you can see a strap I hooked up to hold the tank in place. A rubber strap would have been better. Check it out! Was it easy? No, but it worked. Be sure and wear gloves for this part as the old anode rod is hot. Also check your clearance overhead during removal. Note that I have so much sediment in my tank that it hangs off the end of this old rod. Because of this, tank drainage for me is definitely in order. Some people recommend dissolving the sediment using white vinegar and if you decide to go this route, first shut off the drain and funnel in one half to one gallon of white vinegar into the anode rod hole. After letting it soak, reopen the drain, 
and open and close the cold water supply a few times to stir up the sediment. Once again, let all the water and sediment drain. Don't be surprised if your anode rod looks as bad as this one. The rod is designed to attract the minerals that cause the bad smell, and in doing so, to self-destruct over time. Mine was not this bad, mainly because I had cleaned it a while back, but this time I'm going to replace it. As mentioned, the standard length is 48 inches, but the last rod I installed had to be cut to 44 because it would not seat properly, most likely due to all the sediment in the tank bottom. The labels on the new rod need to be removed, and I do so by soaking them in an orange-based adhesive remover and scratching them off with a razor blade scraper. Four inches was measured and cut off the end. Using my hacksaw, the magnesium was actually tougher to cut than the galvanized pipe. I recommend using an electric sawzall for this, if you have one. Of course, you'll want to clean the rod with soap and water afterwards. Apply two to three rounds of Teflon Plumber's thread tape and the anode rod is gently lowered into place. If the rod is extremely difficult to thread by hand, back off and start again. The cheater pipe is not used here, only the breaker bar is used for tightening, and I do so until the rod is tight, as shown. Close the drain valve and remove your hose. Check for leaks. The cold water supply valve is slowly reopened. Your water may spit and sputter until all the air is out of the line. Don't forget to shut off the hot water faucet you opened earlier. Power is reapplied to my hot water heater by reinserting the jumper connector. If you didn't drain your tank, you may need to use several gallons of the old leftover hot water before the smell improves. As for me, this job is complete.